Hey, what's up guys, Fizzy here and welcome back to another video on the channel and today we've got a throwback to a video that I did about a month ago which was of banned football badges. Now I've got to say straight away what's going on in the background. Um, I am currently at the Redmen TV studio as I'm currently staying in England um, for many reasons. Um, if you may not know, there's kind of an invasion with Ukraine and Russia. I'm not going to get into it really, however, I do live in Poland and there's a few things that we just kind of want to make sure, take a step back and just make sure we know what's going on over there before we go back up to Poland with my daughter. Just, you know, generic stuff, of course, it's boring, you don't really care, do you? Anyway, yeah. the cheapest and most reliable coins on the market, go down to userbuy.com, link is down below in the description and make sure to use code VISA at checkout for 5% off. Let's get into today's video, which we got eight separate kits in football history. There's only eight like I found, which is quite surprising actually, that has been banned, officially banned, and there's a reason why for it. So let's begin. If you guys do enjoy, smash a like button and also subscribe if you're new. I think we are on 281,000 subscribers. So thank you all for the love on the channel, especially the, the commentary stuff for Burnley. It honestly means a lot and I'm still, I'm still surprised to say really. So yeah, thank you for the love. And let's get stuck in. So coming in at number one here, we're going back to the 2013, well, 2014 World Cup. It was banned in 2013 as this is the Brazilian third kit. Now, I never even knew about this and it is a, a tradition, obviously, with Brazil that they wear yellow and green for their home shirts and blue and white, or really just blue of any kind for the away kit. But they actually tried, Nike, to have a third kit, which is a full blacked out kit, you can see on the screen right now, Neymar in it. It looks quite nice actually. Now, this was officially banned. They had one mock-up, one photo shoot, and it took about a day or so later for the actual Brazilian Federation to say, what's the, no, like they just laughed it off basically. With countries, especially with South, you know, South American countries, they're a bit, they're a bit strict with what they want with their traditions and with their branding. And this was just a step too far. So if you're ever a fan, of a blackout kit or really any kit that's not blue or yellow and green and you're Brazilian, then I'm, I'm sorry, but it's just probably not going to happen. Number two, and while we're on the topic of South America, we might as well go over to Argentina as for Argentina, they had a 94 World Cup shirt and it looked like this. Now, it, it looks like a pretty nice shirt, you know, blue and white stripes. It's Argentina, so what do you really expect? But there's a one specific detail that I didn't really think about that was an issue, but it was the black inline, the outline in between each stripe. Apparently that is deemed as unacceptable. Yeah, South Americans, they're pretty mental, let's be honest here, because that just little tiny black little stripes in between the blue and white, that is against the law, pretty much. Like, I, I, they really like their traditions over there in South America. I kind of respect it. Just means that you can't really do much in terms of um, experimenting for kit design. So if you ever wonder why does the Argentine kits always look the same, now you know the answer. Up next, in number three, we're going over the way to Italy, which we have the Fiorentina 1992-93 shirt. Now you've, you probably know this, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. Just, this is a shirt. It looks, it looks very nice. It's a very nice shirt. A great collector's album, Fiorentina, very well known for some great looking shirts across history and in recent history back in the 90s. You know, very nice. Have you noticed, have you noticed a bit of a problem? Yeah, um, I don't know if I can even say the word, but basically, um, 1994, man with a moustache, symbol. I, th that, I think that's enough information that I can really give you guys because I, can't, I don't want this to be demonetized. But look at it, you can kind of tell your eyes the kind of symbol I'm speaking of, and there's a kind of the pattern inside there. I, apparently, this wasn't noticed till about halfway through the season, which, to, of course, embarrassment for Fiorentina, they took out the shirt, and I think they used the previous season. But yeah, there was um, that symbol on the shirt for quite a while. Now, on number four and number five, because this is the same team within a span of two seasons or two years, and this is Cameroon. You definitely know about this. I feel like you probably should. And it still, it still makes me laugh to the day that they must have just had so much stick off FIFA because it's two times in a row that they've been caught for it. So back in 2002, Cameroon, they put out this. Like, I, either you love it or you hate it. It's basically a sleeveless shirt, which they do play in Africa. I, I don't really have any, you know, like, I think it makes sense. Like, it's a pretty hot country if you know where Africa is. So, it's a sleeveless shirt. 
Apparently that is just not allowed, it's banned, like you must have sleeves. A quick little Google search, according to FIFA, the reason why they took it down was because it's not in the spirit of the game or something like that. I, I don't really know why. Apparently they just don't like anything to be different. We're not done there. Cameroon, they're back at it again. I kind of like them because they, they go against uh, the man, as what you may say. Back in 2004, they had this. It looks like a normal shirt. You know, it's got sleeves, so you can start there. But a bit of a, a, a quirky little element. It's all one piece. Yeah, um, the actual shorts to the shirt. That's not separate entities. That's not separate piece of fabric. That's all the same thing. I don't know how they've made it work here, but yeah, um, obviously FIFA saw this and they again weren't, weren't very happy, you know, sipping on their champagne on their yachts or whatever they do over there in FIFA. They're not really known for the best track records, are they? But yeah, they ruined their fun yet again. And ever since then, Cameroon has been good boys ever since. Until next year, probably. Number six, and this is quite recent, back in 2018, 2019, China was gonna drop this away kit, which, I think I speak for all of us, which is an absolute banger. Black with yellow, you know, outlines across it and we're dragging across the actual shirt itself, like a nice little pattern. It's a really, really nice shirt and Nike, they put out the photos and people's ready to go buy it at launch. And on the 11th hour, an hour before launch, the Chinese Federation just cut it out completely and just completely put their foot down and said no. Now the reason why, they never actually said, but with, a bit of speculation, they believe that it's because the dragon, which is of course a very, you know, traditional symbol in China, a very sacred symbol in China, and they didn't really feel the need to put it over the shirt as a pattern, or we think so, which is a shame because it's actually a really, really nice shirt, and I feel like this could be an absolute banger for years to come. Sadly, thanks to China, it's their fault again, you know, it's always China's fault. We never got it. Number seven here, and we're almost at the end now, so you can stop hearing my voice. I'm, I'm sure you'll come forward to that. That this is Mexico. That back in 1999, they dropped this shirt, which is a, a throwback to, of course, the Aztec shirt that we saw in World Cups previously. And it'd be a nice little throwback to that, as it is quite an nice looking shirt. Now, they use a different pattern for this, a different logo, a different symbol. And the issue is, is that the FA of Mexico was fine with it. It's not the it's not Mexican FA this time. No, it was the federal government. The federal government stopped this shirt from being released. Now, my only guess is the fact that the actual, the symbol that was used as a pattern was an actual symbol for the Mexican government, or so we believe. It probably is that. Basically, the U.S. shirt, and instead of there being a pattern of an eagle on there. It's just the entire FBI logo. That's what I think has happened here. And on the last shirt here, here we go, number eight. And we've got ourselves here, a Barcelona shirt. There's always Barcelona involved. There's always some sort of controversy here. And it's very recent, actually, back in 2019, for a shirt that was supposed to be dropped back in the 2021 20, season. It looked like this. Now, it doesn't look that bad at first glance. I mean, it looks like a, a normal white shirt with a St. George's badge on the right-hand side. And that wasn't the problem. The problem was the fact that it was a white shirt for Barcelona of all teams with a bluish, you know, outline and you know, on the sleeves and the bo basically it looked very similar to Real Madrid, which having a Barcelona shirt, which even vaguely looks like Real Madrid, it's just not going to go down well, is it? So obviously, after the original Barcelona Ayohaki said that this was all good to go from the fans and sponsors, I believe, as well. It just wasn't going to go down well. So this shirt got pulled down quite fast. There you go, lads. That is each football shirt that has been banned. If I missed any out, then let me know. I don't think so. And tell me, what is your best ever football shirt? Just by either by nostalgia or by just the general appearance. Tell me yours down below in the comments. And my name is Vizel. See you next time.